The topic is as soft as cotton, and we're talking to the author, uh, Judge Joyce Carter Ball, who has given us some information relative to the novel itself, in addition to some uh, information about uh, how you became involved in writing this novel, uh, Judge. Go on. Yes, um, Dr. Hay, I, um, well, let me say, first of all, that A Soft as Cotton is a tribute mm -hmm. to African-American women. Mm -hmm. And um, writing a novel had been a dream of mine for many years, yeah. as was going to law school. And, um, and this is how I began. Um, my family and I moved from Richmond, Virginia, to Memphis uh, many years ago after my husband was offered a position that we thought was a great opportunity and he accepted it. Um, I had always wanted to go to law school. I was accepted at the college but as I said earlier I wasn't in a position to go at that particular time. And uh, after we moved to Memphis I got a job in a hospital as a social worker. But I still wanted to go to law school and I discussed this with my husband. And so after we got settled, uh, I applied to the University of Mississippi School of Law. And uh, I still remember that day in April when I received my acceptance letter. And at that particular time, um, we'd only been in our new home a few months. Our daughters were very young, and uh, we didn't have any family in Tennessee. And so when my husband came home from work that evening, I showed him the letter, and I asked him if I could quit my job and go to law school. <laughs> <laughs> well, and this was his response. Uh, he looked at me and he said, uh, Joyce, I know this is something you've always wanted to do. And uh, it may be a struggle for us, but I think you should go for it. Good. And that is what I did. And that fall, I was off to law school. Now, that first year, I had all 8 o'clock classes. And that was pretty scary because... Oxford, Mississippi is approximately 90 minutes from where we were living at that time. And uh, I didn't intend to be late for class, so this is what we did. We had a plan. Uh, every night I helped my daughters decide what they wanted to wear to school the next day. And the next morning I got them up early um, and I helped Jamie get dressed. Jamie was four at the time and Asher was eight. And she said she didn't need my help. Mm. Uh, my husband prepared breakfast, and he took the girls to school. In order for me to get to class on time, I left my home every day, Monday through Friday, literally at the crack of dawn. And uh, now, I'm a Southern girl. As I said, I was born and raised in Virginia, where there are lots of tobacco fields, corn fields, soybean fields, peanut fields, you name it. But I had never seen cotton plants. Okay. <laughs> and as I traveled from Memphis to Oxford, I saw several cotton fields mm -hmm. along Highway 78. Mm -hmm. And in the fall, at the crack of dawn, mm -hmm. the ground appeared to be covered with a blanket of snow. Mm -hmm. The sight was captivating, mesmerizing. I've seen it before beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now, one of my classmates asked me if I could pick her up some mornings, and she lived in nearby Holly Springs. And as I traveled to 